what are words? What you know, what are they, right? So they're these little black symbols on paper. You know, if you have a piece of paper that has words on it, what you break it down into its components, right? So it's just we call them letters that are put next to each other and that make words, right? And a certain combination of those letters means that this is a different word from this word. But when you break it down, it's just a piece of paper, which is made from a tree. And then it's ink that's put on the paper in a certain uh, pattern, right? To form a letter, which is put next to another pattern, which is another letter, right? Mm -hmm. So in that sense, do the words really exist, right? So words, we could say, like they mentally exist. They exist in our mind because we perceive the ink on the paper in that shape as a word. So mentally and psychologically, the word exists. I, my argument is just that words don't physically exist, right? So, because when you break it down, it's just ink, paper. If we're looking at my computer screen, it's just pixels being projected by various electronic mechanisms. It's just an illusion. It's not really there. Can we say that wind exists, even though sometimes we can hear it, sometimes we can feel it? You know, you see the dust flying, so sometimes you can see it. You know, it makes me think of that, like, too, like, it's not something tangible that you can say, like, it's it exists, but it's there. And I, I guess that's something more, like, natural. Words are something that is humanly created, right? That's another thing. Like... And it makes me think like, well, maybe what about in a par parallel universe, you know, what we consider as a language here is just blabber, you know, with them, you know, right. or how about extra extraterrestrial, um, you know, yeah, like, you beings. know that movie like we won't be able to communicate the same way because yeah. they have maybe a different language. So yeah. to them, we're just saying, you know, stuff. You know, like we're making sounds like dogs make sounds like birds make sounds. You know, we've basically made a way of categorizing different things or giving, you know, certain patterns of sounds to associate them with a particular object. Even cross cultures, um, you know, some, sometimes people say, well, you know, this is bread, but then in Spanish, it's pan. So, Right. Who's right, the English or, or the Spanish? With so many different languages, you know, it's still the same object. It's still the same, you know, physical thing, but it just has a different name depending on the language. Uh, have you seen that movie Arrival? With, with yeah. the, the aliens, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had a circular language, you know? And why uh -huh. did they have that? Because their time was nonlinear. Their time went forwards and backwards at the same time, you know? So, like, their language was... <laughs> You know, based on their mm. their their uh, symbols, if you will, like the ink they shot out oh. that forms a, a a letter or a word or a sentence. Yeah. yeah. So we're able to communicate in in two D form, right? And yeah. since they were in the fourth dimension, they could go yeah outside of or below time. Three D. Then they could communicate through the three dimensional world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you said, words are two D. They're they're just ink on paper. They're they're pixels on a computer monitor and in our mind, our mind interprets those patterns and then forms it into what we call a word. And we learn that as a child growing up and, and there are critical periods. So it's not like the brain has some level of genetic predispositions for language and for, for understanding words. But yeah. once that critical period of development is passed, they say a child can no longer learn words like to read, yeah. write, to speak and that's actually been yeah. a child who was deprived of that and she was mm -hmm. never they tried so hard to get her to learn words but they yeah. barely could get her to learn anything i've heard of that yeah that 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 they deprived her from like it was like the special case where somebody held her away from society or something yeah exactly feral children children who yeah. grew up in the wild same thing mm -hmm. so and when i think of it like that it's like it seems like the words are mostly psychological it doesn't mean they're not important and it doesn't mean we can't use them as tools physically do they really physically exist or is that or is what physically exists the ink and the paper you know that's i guess that's the question yeah yeah that's a that's, that's a 
good question. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes me think like, you know, right now that you were mentioning about the capacity to speak or, or communicate in 2D, right? Like written word and stuff like that. You know, it makes me think like, well, are we capable of communicating in the fourth domain, fourth dimension? Yeah, if we can. Is that what prayer is? You know, it makes me think of that. I know we've had a podcast yes. about that, so don't want to get too much into it, but. Yeah, but, you know, briefly, that is true. Like, if you could, maybe prayers do pass that barrier um, into the fourth dimension and where we could say God or a higher power could exist. Kind of like you said, the movie Arrival, well, they communicated, you know, through these circular objects. Well, do do those circular objects exist? Maybe, like you said, the, the pen and or the pencil and the paper do exist. Yeah. But even you know, the words that we use to refer to them, you know, do those exist? Yeah. And I think it's, it, they exist within our reality. I think that's what it is. Maybe it exists within one's personal reality or one, or one's general reality amongst people. Because let's say, for example, if a tree falls in the forest, did it really fall if only one person saw it? Like. <laughs>